In this video I'm going to take a look at what is called the extended product rule for derivatives um, and you would normally be introduced to this probably in a Calc 1 class um, and, and a lot of people don't even touch on it because it, it is just an extension of the of the regular product rule but sometimes it's easier um, to use this all right if you've got like three products okay I've got a uh, function say f of x g of x and h of x and I need to take the derivative Okay, so for the extended product rule, I'm going to basically have three products because I have three functions. In each one of the products, I'm going to take the derivative of each one of the functions individually. So, in, and I always do it systematically in order. So, in the first set of products of the f of x, g of x, h of x, I take the derivative of f of x and I leave the other two functions alone. And then in the middle product, then I take the derivative of the g function, leaving the other two functions alone. And in my last product, I take the derivative of the h function, and I leave the other two functions alone. Okay, so um, just one quick example of working this out here. Let's say my f of x function is x squared sine x cosine x. Okay, so if I am going to calculate the derivative, f prime of x, all right, on my first product, I'm going to take the derivative of my first function, and the derivative of x squared would be a 2x. All right, I'm going to leave the sine and cosine alone. So sine x, cosine x. All right, in my middle product, I'm going to take the derivative of my middle function. So the other two functions will stay the same. So I'll have the x squared. Taking the derivative of sine, I get cosine x, and then the last function stays the same, cosine x. In my last product, I'm going to be taking the derivative of the cosine x, leaving the first two the same. So x squared, sine x, and then the derivative of cosine being negative sine x. All right, now from here to the end, I'm just going to do a little cleaning up of things. All right, on this first term, I'm not going to do anything to change it. So 2x sine x cosine x. On the middle term, I have a cosine x and a cosine x. So I'm going to write that as a squared term. So x squared cosine squared x. And on this last one, um, I went ahead and rushed in and put that plus sign there. I think I'm just going to pull it out and make it a minus sign out there in front. So a minus, and then x squared, and then I've got a sine x and a sine x there, so I'll go sine squared x on that one. All right, now at this point, um, I do not have a greatest common factor of anything. I mean, I could take an x out, but that's not really gonna help a lot. So on this, probably, I would take a look at this, and I would probably pull out an x squared just from these last two terms. All right, just depending on how you are wanting to keep going and simplifying this one. So I would probably leave my first term alone right here. 2x sine x cosine x. All right, and then out of these two terms, I would pull out an x squared. And then I would leave cosine squared x minus sine squared x. All right, so um, just one example there of showing you a real quick example of how to apply that extended product rule all right with varying ways of simplifying it and factoring different things out at the end um, definitely thanks for watching be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends thanks